Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 59 for Friday the 4th of December 2015. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and that goofy bastard right there is Ken. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm I'm doing pretty good right now. Gonna... Are you relieved? Are you oh. relieved that I made it through the intro and insulted you? Yeah, well, yes, it's normal. Well, it's what normal should be. This is <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm I'm happy to oblige. I'm happy to oblige. Good, good. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm actually I'm really enjoying myself right now. I I had kind of a shitty week. Yeah. Uh, pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, now, I, now I'm interested. Now, I I didn't give a damn about it until you said <laughs> pun intended, and that suddenly that like raptures my mind, and I'm ready to ready to make fun of you now. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I've been pooping and peeing out my butthole. For about three days now. <laughs> um, oh, not, uh, I just, uh, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Yeah, you know, I, I'm like most people, I think, where, um, you know, you don't poop at work unless mm. you just have to. And um, I, as, I as, as my buddy Jack Clinton told me, uh, he likes to play a game called Don't Poop at Work. <laughs> yeah. But it's really cool because even when you lose, you kind of win because you're getting paid yes. to poop at work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's that's very true. Um, it, I, I didn't enjoy it though. Uh, it was nice to get paid while this was happening, but um, yeah, I, I didn't. I don't like. I don't really like peeing out my butthole. <laughs> no. I don't know, man. I, I think I got some kind of virus or something because I don't have any other symptoms. Or <laughs> or you just enjoy peeing out of your butthole it's like a newfound talent you have but i don't so <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of a, a a shitty last few days pun intended oh um, man but uh you, you know it was pissy, aren't you? it was uh it, you know it, uh, other than that it was it was uh it was an all right week we get we got our christmas tree put up we put up a few de- decorations and things um I, you know i'm not the um uh, I, I don't think i would go so far as to call myself a scrooge but i'm not the most jolly Chris- christmas yay christmas especially when it's more than a couple of weeks out from christmas mm. um but it is kind of nice i mean now now that everything's up it's kind of nice to look at it and yeah it's cool so it's cool those watching the uh the video right now can look behind me and see the massive christmas decorations that i have this year Oh yeah, it's pretty. It's, it was it's winding. It's so yeah, bright. It, it was it was hard to uh, it was hard to put them up, and uh, I think I'm gonna be I'm done. Like that's all I can handle. It's I'm done. So I'm good. To yeah, go. I'm not. I'm not sure if I can see the. Well, they all exactly. kind of blend together. That's what the problem is. It, oh, you know, I see. Okay. There, there's yeah. so many lights and so many decorations that it actually just uh, perforates a white light coming from the walls behind me. I really like the symmetry. Right? It's, I mean, you know yeah. my OCD. I, I had to have it fucking balanced out, you know? Right. <laughs> like, like it looks it looks even all the way across. All the way across. It's it's pretty... It took some time. It took some yeah. uh, some sitting down realizing I was not going to do shit. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, it took I'm some sure. time. So. <laughs> I'm sure. This is probably the first you even thought of it. Uh, n- well, no. Actually, because the lady down the halls had her shit on the door for like a month and a half now or something, so... Um... Although yeah, I, I, I did think about getting a uh, uh, a pinnacle, like, you know, going out back where the trees are and stuff and getting making like a, 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 a pinnacle wreath and hanging oh, that sure. on my door just yeah. to see how long it takes before people, you know, started leaving sticky notes on my door about being a Satanist because that's always fun. Oh, well, you know, they can fuck off. Yeah, well. You start the, leaving notes on their doors for whatever religion they chose. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. First of all, pinnacle is not a sign. Or, oh. A pinnacle is not a sign of Actually, uh, Satanism, not... but <laughs> yeah. But, well, whatever. <laughs> well, that's what, you know, put a cross. You know, somebody with a cross on the door, and, and you say "fuck you, Jew." Oh, that'd be great. That's basically that's basically an that'd equivalent, right? Or or just take their cross and flip it upside down and say "fuck you, Judas." <laughs> kind of hit all, all fronts, right? Oh God. Damn oh, it! Uh, last week we got racial. Now we're getting religious, and now it's getting—we're just going to be the uh, 
Well, oh, oh, we need to change. Okay, RMP is now the the racially motivated podcast. The racially motivated podcast. I like it. That's uh, <laughs> man, that is, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Mostly because it reminded me to click over to the Rich Misery channel so the the stream can show up on the bottom on the from the appropriate chat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The By the way, Luke, motivated Luke, podcast. Luke, like. says, movie man Lucas says Christmas before Halloween is always fun. Uh, no, no, it is not. I fucking hate that shit. Mm. Although I, I can tell you that the decorations and shit like that are pissing me off less now that Thanksgiving has passed. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. After, after Thanksgiving, have at it. Especially if it's December. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. It, it, as long as it's after Black Folk Day. Um, so this week, <clears throat> this week I've been preparing for surgery. Speaking of shitty. God damn it. And, uh. <laughs> So my right hand, my right thumb is what's going to get operated. I'm going to get a couple of screws in it and uh, reattach some stuff. But I'm I'm right-handed, which yeah. is which so, has one caused an excessive amount of pain because I keep forgetting that I'm right-handed and my right hand's fucked up. So I keep grabbing shit and you know, like the other day I went and slipped on the ice and I grabbed my like on the handrail. You know, it's like ah, and end up letting go of the rail and falling out anyway. So it's like a double fuck, yeah. you know. Oh god. Um, but I've been practicing with my left hand. <laughs> I've been practicing writing. I can I can write okay. about four or five letters before my hand is like "fuck you." This is dumb. Um, and I I, I I thought I'd like write in reverse, but I don't. I just write normal, <laughs> and then I get like ink or whatever all over my knuckles because I'm like fucking clawing at it like a sloth Dude, or some shit. No, you should totally write backwards. I, I was gonna try that, but uh, look, I'm I'm having troubles with just life right now. So, um, so by the way, Movie Man Lucas said exactly what I was gonna say, which kind of makes me proud because he's my boy. <laughs> he said, "He said, stranger." <laughs> uh, well, we'll get to that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, right here on the Ritual Misery podcast. Um, please. okay, so, uh, so. I've been doing like everything that I can with my left hand. Every every chance I get trying to practice with my left hand. Unfortunately, there is one thing I only get like one chance a day to do. Yeah. So I am still not proficient at wiping my ass with my left hand. Uh, yeah. I, oh, God. Yeah, I can see that being a problem. Yeah. So I got a whole butt ton of fucking baby wipes and, and it's not been a pretty picture. Like it's. I'm washing my hands very well after every wipe. I, I promise you that. Ooh. Um, yeah. But yeah, that brings in the, the forecast. Okay, so my hand's going to be wrapped up for two weeks, and it's going to be in a hard cast for two weeks as opposed to a soft cast, whatever. Um, so during that time, you know, uh, living here in uh, in Korea, it it may come down to, to needing some strange reaction. Mm. Um. So the question is, do you go for the uh, for the other sister, or do you just try to go f- totally for the stranger and just sit on your hand and and hope that <laughs> you know? So even when even when your hand comes to now, it's now it's a whole new deal anyway because it's still not the regular. And yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, the, the, the sister. W- once once my hand comes out of a cast, it's still gonna be all fucked up. So now I'm gonna have the retarded normal. You know, like I'm, I'm looking at my my entire life of masturbation is going to change for like the next three months. Yes, yeah, totally. So, oh my might be time to invest in sex toys, man. Like, uh, might, see, those might things, do, do you know how hard those things are to clean with only one hand? <laughs> I never imagined it until this moment. Well, there you go. See, these are the things that I'm trying to tackle right now. These are the life <laughs> situations that I'm trying to take upon myself to tackle for everyone else. Hey, for uh, your I'm convenience, a... Joe, Joe Mon put a link to Fleshlight.com. In, in, uh, <laughs> oh, in oh, I've already got one. <laughs> but, but, but thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Re- review shortly. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, why is it going to be a short review? Uh, well. Anyway. <laughs> Squash the rumors. <laughs> Oh shit! Um, oh, boy. so yeah, there we, there we. Uh, uh, so yeah, man. So I, yeah. I also got fired this week. <sighs> yeah. So what? Uh, yeah. So, so um, 
So I was the uh, the support section section chief. Right. So you're like the uh, the tool room guy. The, yeah. Uh, the guy that's like in charge of all of the like background programs to include tool issuing, um, hazardous materials, hazardous waste disposal, uh, safety vehicles. Right. Cal- calibrated. Um, right. All the yeah. things that make the unit make put airplanes in the air other than the actual maintenance. Right. Essentially. Yeah. Um, so what happened? Well, without getting into the, to the legal issues of it, which aren't mine, but I still not necessarily free to disclose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Skirt, skirt um, it. Yeah. Skirt it. Certain people ke- kept fucking up enough. I, I had a dichotomy. I had these these certain certain individuals that were really awesome. They were doing like 90% of the work. And then I had these other individuals that were doing just enough to stay out of trouble. Well, th- those don't quite balance out when there aren't enough people doing awesome shit. Because yeah. it, was, it was not a 50-50 mix. Um, but essentially what it comes down to is there was enough jackassery and fuck up in this. And not just in my section, but overall in the, in the entire, entire environment that uh, they needed to make some changes. And I was that first change to go. Mm. Yeah, several other changes have been made since then. So, it, which makes me feel a little bit better. But either way, you know, basically my leadership needed to show face, and I was the easy target. Right, right, right. Because of uh, the things that were going on in my section that I was trying to fix. So, which you is know, funny it, because it all... now, now they're having a conversation with the uh, yesterday, last night. Yeah, last night before we left work, they were having a conversation with the person they chose to replace me, and all of the things that they were talking about and mentioning were the shit that I was already talking about and mentioning, but nobody was listening to me, which is cool. Right. I mean, I, again, I don't mind. You know, It's not the first time I've been fired from a, from a shitty job. Now I have three times as many people and three, three times as many other people helping me work those people. So, <laughs> yeah, like same, well, that's, same pay, you know, less responsibility. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. It's like I told you the other day, you know, the support section chief, I've done that before. It's a fucking shitty, shitty, shitty fucking job. So you're still getting paid the same amount of money and you've got like what a fifth of the responsibility yeah. is what you did back there. Yep. It's, it's man, it's horrible. The, the, now, you know, when you did it, section you did chief it. for whatever, uh, of, of support probably has the highest turnover rate of any job on the fly line. Yeah. Yeah. It's the easiest, it's the easiest section to find fault in. Therefore, it is the first place that people, you know, commanders, pro supers, et cetera, want to point at as a as a point of failure and want to fire people. Yep. Yeah. Which I find is very ironic because in my last assignment, I kept telling people, hey, you need to understand how much support is doing and how much they're actually putting forth and how much their changes and their problems affect you guys and how much, you know, the general maintainer can help support by doing the smallest little shit. Yeah. Yep, yep. And here I am uh, about a year later. <laughs> right. <coughs> so it all it all comes full circle. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, well, good, 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 good. I'm not, I'm not bitter. You're, you're still employed. You know, saying saying that you got fired makes it sound like you're no, no longer employed. But... Posi- positionally fired. Right, right. So not employment uh, fired. Yeah, so it's good. It's good. Yep. You're still getting paid. It, it, everything's still good. But so, all right. In all this chaos and shittiness of, of work, did you find time to do something geeky? Um, I <laughs> I decided because I was um in in an in off mood earlier earlier this week. I decided to pull a little social experiment on uh, some close friends of ours. You include. Oh, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> We have a Slack group, um, and I posted a link in the Slack group uh, about how podcasting works, how it's monetized, how you know all the the, the backside of, of podcasting. You know, even it even got into what equipment you should use to actually podcast. Right, and uh, um, our little Slack group, our little internal group, has differing levels of understanding as far as podcasting goes. So I thought it'd be interesting to share this article, but while I was getting ready to share the article, I thought to myself, let's go ahead and put a challenge out there, a personal challenge to each one of these individuals to just just tick them off a little bit to make sure that they read and, and ingest this article. And uh, 
as far as I can tell, it fucking worked. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. When you when you posted that, I was like, oh my God. Like Amos is being Amos. He is going to <laughs> piss some people off. Because I was like, I had like I, I wasn't pissed. Like it's it's whatever. But I I had that when I read it, I had this like tinge of like, like, oh, I should probably be mad about that. <laughs> Because you called out each person individually. For, <laughs> individually, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I was like, ah, fuck it, whatever. I'm not going to respond to it because it's <laughs> fucking whatever. I was going to read it anyway, so fuck it, whatever. <laughs> and it actually, it actually. It sparked up a little bit of a debate. Yeah. Well, it, for me, what I got out of it, it, it named a, a uh, microphone that I might actually buy. Mm. And it will probably save me money because I was, I was actually saving my my pennies we talked last week about me being a frugal bastard mm-hmm. uh, i was thinking about saving my pennies and getting a, a high old pr40 mm-hmm. uh which we, is fairly we, we expensive. Still, still the microphone you want yeah it is e- even even if you have a, a cheaper alternative yeah yeah I'll, it'll still be on my wish list um but there is an alternative listed and i the name escapes me right now it's like an atr 2100 or something like that um anyway the, i was like yeah, like th- this thing is really high reviews, and it, it it seems to be as effective as the PR forty. Well, in most cases, yeah, and it's like a sixth of the price or something like yeah. that. So that's what I got out of it because the article, while very interesting, there wasn't a whole lot of new info to me because I've read a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> you're clicking on the link from chat realm, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so just not so, laugh loud while you were talking about being fired <laughs> because i was reading that page oh, okay so, so, we, so we have to t- take a look at this uh it's called mutton bone <laughs> um thank you joke man by the way yeah uh, wow wow see now it, it, uh, wow <laughs> yeah that's uh i I, 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 I looking at this, I'm thinking I went I went softcore on on my choice of of uh, <laughs> sex toys. All right, so <laughs> it, it, instead of like getting all um, crazy over this, I, how about we just direct everybody the audio audio listeners to muttonbone.com. Yes, just check it out uh, specifically muttonbone.com slash specs if you want to see the page that we're laughing about. Uh, clearly they, not safe for work. So yes, <laughs> yes. Don't look <laughs> unless you work somewhere really cool. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lucas, don't open it at all. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it. It's not that. It's not that. Bad. You can you can look at it. And uh, look at it and dream, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So anyway, all right. But, but yeah, you're right. It was in. It was interesting to see every because every single person in the Slack group responded. And it was interesting, and I think you probably expected their responses to be in kind. Uh, and pretty much, nothing yeah. from their responses. No, so, no, but it, but it was very fun to get the reactions out of them that we got. That, that, or that yeah. I got. Well, well, the thing, is, just to be clear, I was not in on this. Oh no, I I chose to kind of quietly observe the, the fallout because I was like, Fuck, Amos is being Amos. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So all right. I I have this strange philosophy of if I'm gonna fuck with people, I'm gonna fuck with the people that are closest to me. <laughs> so it's more fun that way. It really is. Plus, I'm I'm wrong less. <laughs> <laughs> now, keep in oh. mind all all the individuals. I I told every individual what kind of reaction I expect them to have. Yes. and all of them defied my expectations. Like yes. they, they were they're like. No, that's not true. Blah 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 blah. But in their responses, they essentially confirmed my my assumptions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was funny. And you know, correct me if I'm wrong in in assuming y- your intention here. But no hard feelings, guys. No, no, none this at all. In love, this was all in love. We love we love you guys. Um. All right. So, the, the, probably the geekiest thing I did this week. Was as I've been talking for the last couple of weeks, I'm I'm playing Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront on mm-hmm. PS4. And this week on the first, they had their first DLC, and it was the Battle of Jakku. Jakku. Th- this is the the, uh, the DLC that is free if you bought the deluxe edition. Right. Well, it'll be free. Uh, uh next week for Everybody like else. the general. The deluxe edition got it a week early. 
So it comes out on the the eighth, I believe, for uh, for most of the uh, players of the game. But for the people that bought the deluxe edition, they got it on the first. Well, anyway, for for those that don't know, Jakku is the desert planet that you see in the trailers for The Force Awakens. A lot of people assumed, at least in the the beginning, that it was Tatooine. It's actually Jakku. And it turns out that I learned from this DLC package is that Jakku is a like a massive weapons manufacturing place for the Empire. And this battle took place about a year after the second Death Star was destroyed. Mm. And the rebels, you know, were were trying to, you know, clean out the the last remnants of the Empire. So they went to Jakku to get rid of their basically their their main supply depot for weapons. And of course the empire was like, you know, fuck you. We're going to defend this. So they pretty much send their entire fleet to Jakku to defend it. So it was this gigantic, massive, massive battle happened above Jakku and on the surface of Jakku. So when you play this level, there are star destroyers falling from the sky there is just wreckage of ADATs and uh, X-Wings and TIE Fighters and just shit everywhere. Nice. There's, there's shit everywhere, and there's shit constantly falling from the sky. And if you look up, there is just laser battle like fucking crazy in the sky. And this is a one of the large maps with a, a, 20, a 20 v 20 uh, model. And so it's just it's just nonstop firefight. It is so much fucking fun. Usually, w- when when there's chaos in a game, uh, maybe it's just the old guy me. I just uh, it's too much chaos. I don't like it. No, this is amazing. This is my favorite <laughs> level to play. This is so much fucking fun. Mm. And I I geeked the fuck out for probably two to three days on the Battle of Jakku. It was so much fun. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and just for the just for those interested, the, this is cons- this battle that we're playing in Battlefront is considered part of the canon, the new canon of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So we're participating in the battle that's going to be a major factor in the Force Awakens, which you can see in the in the very first tra- one of the very first things you see of Star Wars footage is a crashed Star Destroyer on a de- on a desert planet, and that's exactly where this came from. Is Battle of Jakku. So anyway, that's that's yes. my geek thing of the week. <laughs> now, now, how much could that feed into the co- the, the possibility that uh, uh, I mean, this just just came in uh, off my head, and again, I haven't seen even the latest TV trailers or whatever. So, um, what if during this battle is where like Han and Chewie, you know, they're they're fighting along and stuff like that, doing their thing, and something happens, and they just hit hyperdrive. Either it goes off accidentally because, well, because that that's likely to happen, and they end up somewhere and they they're unable to get back because you know the hyperdrive is broken or whatever, and that's why they do the chewy. We're home. Mm. See, well, my theory about that scene is that they lost the Falcon somehow. Like the they don't because that they that scene takes place on the Falcon, or mm-hmm. at least that's what it looks like to me. Mm-hmm. And I think they lost the ship, and so them saying their home is them returning to the, sh- to the Millennium Falcon. That's yeah, that's my theory. Okay, okay, I, that, all right, all right. I, I don't know. We'll don't find out. I, two weeks. We're two weeks away. <laughs> 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 yes, and the the base theater actually opened up today, so I might be able to watch the fucking show on base. Oh, of course, right tickets now. won't go on sale until like right before the show. Yeah, so, yeah, cause yeah. They don't do like oh, so they don't do like assigned tickets. It's just like you you buy your ticket. They give you a receipt for the six fifty you gave them or whatever it is, and that's your receipt. Like it doesn't say shit about it. Like if I wanted to go in there and be like, hey, I want, I want two tickets for every showing from here until you stop showing the show, they'd be like, uh, how do you want to go there? Oh shit! <laughs> like fuck. yeah, yeah. You know, all the, yeah. Uh, the the dude like one two, like that's that's damn it. I hate language barriers. So, um, <laughs> shit pisses me off. Oh, uh, shit. How about TED Talks, man? Did you do a TED Talk this week? I sure as fuck did not. Neither did I. I, I, I didn't even have time to really mess with my PlayStation. So, 
yeah. It, it, this is the first time in a long time that that you and I have had a almost said a solo show, just a you know, just a me and you show, and neither one of us watched a TED talk. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been. But anyway, let's get over that. So, um, <laughs> yes. so moving on. So, so tell me what your your the main thing you wanted to talk about tonight. Okay. Later. Oh my gosh. Because I've I've got a whole bunch of like peripheral short topics to talk about. You, 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 did, give me the. Did, give me okay, the main so, one. did you read this article? I don't know if I read this exact one. Okay. But I've I've read article like I think two articles with basically the same headline. All right. Um, General Welsh has finally admitted that uh, manpower in the Air Force is going to the shitter. And yeah. we, General Welsh is the chief of staff of the Air Force. Yes, he is the, the, the highest, highest ranking Air Force individual military guy in the, in the Air Force. Yes. Um, reports directly to the secretary of the Air Force who reports to the secretary of defense who yes. reports to the president. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Man, <laughs> you saw the, the brain shunt coming in. You're like, oh, yeah. I'll fucking take it. <laughs> I um, got you. Bro. <laughs> Um, so he, he comes out and he, he admits that, uh, you know, his, his statement is basically, we cannot sustain the level of cuts that we've taken over the last couple of years and blah, 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 blah. And the John Q public, um, uh, article that I will put in the show notes, eventually I'll be able to put it in the chat room, but, um, it, it basically, it's written by the prior commander for the 14th airlift squadron out at Charleston air force base, a retired Lieutenant Colonel. And he's the one that holds the John Q. Public uh, web blog. Oh, and okay. uh, he's got some pretty pointed views. Now, all the v- views that he shared in here about pilots and how the pilots have, you know, the operators have have been cut and they've been resourced different places and everything else. And that it's kind of a dangerous situation to have the people that are flying planes working this hard and this, this many hours and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, I can't, well, well, I can't necessarily. Let's start uh, with call flying their additional duty yeah because they do so much shit that it's beyond their primary afsc yep yeah exactly um now the the point that i wanted to bring home on this is when did the manning issues begin because i, I remember you and i joined right after the drawdown of the post um desert storm drawdown Right, you know, right. ninety five, ninety six was a big drawdown. Uh, ninety seven started leveling out, and then September, you know, kept dropping a little bit, and then September eleventh happened, and they had this big beef up, and then probably by twenty two thousand four, they started cutting people again. Yeah, well, Just it's choppy, kind of a choppy, cyclic- choppy, 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 choppy. Yeah, it's kind of a cyclical thing. I mean, that's kind of what we do. We we push recruitment, push recruitment. Well, and retention as well. So recruitment and retention, recruitment and retention, push, 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 push. And like, oh, fuck, we've got too many people. Cutbacks, 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 Mm -hmm. kick people out, cutbacks, cutbacks. Oh, shit, we kick too many people out. Recruitment and retention, recruitment and just every, what, four to five years, probably, it it switches to the other side. That's that's just kind of what we deal with. Now, there are... discrete branch, but that's definitely the Air Force. There are about 300 and... 20,000 people in the Air Force right now. Okay. Wor- worldwide, roughly. That's the best of my memories. I couldn't find numbers exact because it's been changing so much lately. Right. Um, this particular article tackles a situation where Congress authorized, because it's all about Congress, authorized the drawdown of 25,000 troops a couple years ago. And they did this right at the same time as the big PT push. Um, and that was a... a, a that was pretty much a that was a tool to get people out. Is what it was. That's all it was. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I said that like four years ago when they first brought that shit out. Right. Um, so it's they they brought down these people. They're supposed to bring them down within five years. And General Walsh said, "No, we'll bring them down in one year." And that's when they opened up the hey, if you want to get out, go ahead and apply now. And they got like nineteen thousand responses in a single day of people that are like, "Yep, I'm willing to go." Yep. 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 Well, this has been a continuing trend the entire time that General Walsh has been in in the office. And the supposition is that he's now admitting it towards the end of his tenure, because they typically do about four years. Uh, he's, he's at the end of his, or beginning of his third year, you know, or beginning of his fourth year, end of his third year. And they're talking about 
this particular article, how he's admitting it now to set his successor up to fight the fight of getting more people. And mm. my thing is, how about fighting the fight of not wasting so much fucking money on the F-35, F-22, and these other experimental programs, spending so much money that we don't need to spend on random shit like that, this modernization, when we're still maintaining the old aircraft, and we can't get rid of the ones that are really shitty, but we're trying to get rid of the ones that are unique in their situation. Like, we still have B-52s. That's not a unique airplane. The, the 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 flying rate of the B-52 and the B-1 is so fucking low. Like, the, the MC rate, the mission capable rate, is so low. But we're dumping so much time, manpower, and money into these fucking things just to keep them afloat for some shit that doesn't really apply anymore. Right. So, all right. So, you confuse me. Which side are you on? Modernize or don't modernize? I am on the side of fiscal management being properly done. I understand we need to modernize, but maintaining the B-52 yeah. that we don't really use, it's it's basically designed as a, a Cold War, throw everything you got in the plane, let it fly, it's not coming home. Mm-hmm. The B-1, which they can't keep it in the fucking air. The B-2 that they can't fly because there's too much humidity and rain in the air. I mean, all these bomber aircraft that we, we've been... I mean, the B-52 has been around for coming up on 100 years, you know? It's like they're sitting at like 80 years or some shit. The C-5... I don't know if it's that much, but oh, it's uh, getting up there. It, it's, it's, it's getting there. It's, it's like it's, 60 plus, it, for sure. It was definitely around the 50s. So... It's probably, around, it's probably 60-ish. So there you go. It's an old fucking plane. But but we have we have perfectly capable KC tens and we're replacing those with the the K C twenty eight or twenty six or whatever the hell it is that's got half the payload, half the distance and you know, but it's modern. Like who gives a shit? We you got the stuff that works. And then certain aircraft like the A ten they're trying to get rid of, they're fucking trying to push it out the door as fast as they possibly can. Yet no other plane does the mission that the A ten does. Yeah, A ten A- A- needs to stay put. Um, you see what I'm saying? Like we're spending all, all this money on modernizing the shit that's already working. So we we have the F twenty two, which is a F fifteen slash F sixteen replacement. We have the F thirty five, which is a F sixteen slash A ten replacement. Mm. But neither one of them fully accomplishes the mission of the aircraft they're replacing. But and they cost like fifteen times more. Yeah, yeah. I, so. Mm-hmm. It just it pisses me off to see the fiscal management going to the shitter, and that's on the grand scale. If you want to look at the the minor scale, seriously, how many fucking post it notes are we going to buy for people just to waste? <laughs> post it notes, like oh, holy man. shit! The little green book that it, that they make everybody carry, or at least everybody in Maine. Oh, the the, the little paper green book. Brain. The yeah, paper it, brain. It, it, that thing yeah. costs like a dollar thirty eight, which is already way overpriced. <laughs> or you can buy like half a pad of stickies for that amount from the GSA store. That that is the expediter's best friend. It's that shit just pisses me off. Like, <laughs> uh, man, yeah. See, I'm 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 not gonna take a stance one way or the other on this. I I do have opinions, but I do not feel that I am free to state them. Oh, well. So. <laughs> I I I I I feel that. We need more people to state these opinions. Maybe actually somebody will say something to, that matters and can fucking make a change. Because it's kind of ridiculous that we have people walking around here sitting in an office for eight hours a fucking day wearing $300 jackets to go to and from work. Mm. And we have people on the flat line that can't get fucking waterproof boots. And they're walking in the fucking slush for three months out of the year. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, it, I agree. It, it no, no, I do, I do agree that there's, there's money being spent where it doesn't need to be spent, and vice versa. Like, for example, you walk into any orderly room, and you see these big screen, big flat screen TVs that have what, something that they couldn't write on a piece of paper, like, what the fuck, um. But, uh, 
you get the fl- fl- I'm sorry, my brain. <laughs> I had to reboot real quick. Um, no, but the, you know, this bullshit that, that doesn't need to be spit yet. Yet, like you said, the maintainers are are not adequately dressed. Like, I, yeah. So, so there is a problem. There is a problem. Th- there's a huge problem, and I'm sure it's the same in, in the sister services. But I can only speak for the Air Force. But why are we sure. buying our computers through Afway, being forced to buy computers? From women-owned, minority-owned, dis- disabled-owned, blind-employed. Uh, uh, if they could get a fucking dog to work in there, that's another two points. Plus, if they have like a veteran sitting in a in a, a, a position somewhere, that's another two points that they get plussed up. So then we have to buy a computer from them. Fine. Why do they have to charge three times as much for su- su- for an inferior product than what we could have bought if we just went to fucking Dell directly? Are you it a GPC blows holder? me the fuck away, man. Are you a GPC holder? Uh, no. Have you been? No, no. But I, I have been the but computer you... guy working with Afway, and I oh. have been uh, the building manager, and I've been the vehicle manager, and I've been the fucking tool crib dude. Like, yeah. well, it... I was a I was a GPC holder le- less than a year ago. I I was a GPC holder, and son of a bitch. Yes, so, everything you're saying right now. I was screaming into the wind. I was saying it to people, but nobody listened. Nobody yeah. cared to hear me. So I was basically screaming into the wind. Same shit. So, and and why are we buying full retail priced Samsung fifty five inch TVs to put a display up of nothing that nobody fucking matters and nobody reads when we <laughs> could we could have gone with I don't know the cheaper model Samsung TV that's not four K and rounded and everything else. Put that in a fucking in a break room, oh. slightly smaller size, but we get it for like a tenth the price because we bought this shit on Black Friday. Like, why is that not an option? There's reasons, but it's yeah, it's beyond the scope of. Us it's to fucking out. stupid. Like, I understand the the government. One of the one of the military things that they do is use the military money to sustain the economy. I get it. I understand don't care you could spend so much less money and not need as many taxes if you did things fiscally appropriately than if you just fucking hey we're gonna take all the taxes we want which we're all taking from the fucking the poor people anyway and we're gonna spend all of that on extraordinary shit that nobody fucking needs yeah no I, it, it pisses yeah. me off it's a yeah I, I i get what you're saying so Anyway, Manning is just one one of those pictures, one of those pieces, because that's that's where it all comes in is money. Congress says, "Hey, you're only getting this much money, so you need to, you know, one of the easiest way to to cut money is to, you know, not have as many people making forty thousand a year." Yeah, so. yeah. I can't spell in chat. God. Anyway, <laughs> so all right, man. Ugh. So all right, so let's move on a little bit. All right, okay. Cards Against Humanity. Yes. Such a cool fucking game. Such so, so much fun. Yes. So much fucking fun. In fact, almost a year ago now, we did a podcast episode that we called Podcast Against Humanity, kind mm-hmm. of as a tribute to the game. And mm-hmm. it was a it was a good fun. We made a game. A, well, we didn't play the actual card game, but we made a game of the show as kind of a tribute to the card game. Well, anyway, uh, probably also around about a year ago, we reported on the Cards Against Humanity people selling a box of shit or mm. a box of bullshit i think it was yeah and people bought it in droves and some people were a little upset to receive an actual box of bullshit freeze freeze dried bullshit which most people were amused but bl- some people were like what the fuck <laughs> so <laughs> so you mean it, i bought into a prank and it actually wasn't a prank yeah cuz even it it's all the fine print not even the fine print. The big print. The, there was no and the fine print. Yeah, there was no fine I print. Think it, I think it was big print, with an asterisk, and if you look at the small print with that was uh, associated with the asterisk. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Referenced was the word I was looking for. <laughs> anyway, the small print echoed the big print, saying that this is actually a box of bullshit. Literally, bullshit. You will are you are buying feces from us? Yes. Uh. Anyway, so yo wonderful prank what you know whatever you want to call it, it was is it fantastic uh i think they one-upped it on black friday this year 
Did you hear about this? <laughs> Not until you linked it, but yeah. Yeah, they, they sold nothing hmm. on Black Friday. We're going to sell you nothing. They didn't not sell anything. They sold nothing. Yep. If you get the difference. Yeah. They they had a... You're giving us money for nothing in return. Right, exactly. They said, yeah. we are selling nothing. Like, like no, the, the, they, they it, went they into were the, the land... for the, $5. The, 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 what is it? The fucking never-ending story. They reached into the never-ending story. They ah. grabbed the nothing that you never yes. saw in the fucking movie because it didn't exist. So well, they no, grabbed no, no, no. the nothing. No, no. They, in, they, the, in, in the movie, they portrayed it as a basically like a dark cloud. That was, when, just, in, that, that was just the front of the nothing as it stirred up the actual land. The nothing sure. was really behind it. You never actually saw the nothing. Okay, That's okay. my interpretation of it. So no, no, Cars I, Against Humanity, they, they reached out into the fucking the <laughs> cinematic ether and they grabbed this nothing and they brought it to the real world and they distributed it for the small cost of how much? Five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah. What a fucking $5. deal. Five dollars. Like, what, what a deal. Receiving nothing from yes. cards against humanity. But, but you could receive it instantaneously. I mean, the delivery Instant- alone, the delivery times alone are amazing. Fastest delivery in history. Like they in actually, fact, they actually they, delivered it before you fucking yeah. bought it. Yes, exactly. You thought about buying it, and you've already received. Well, see, it. see, here's the thing, though. I, I was thinking about this, and. They actually gave it out to everyone who has ever existed and ever will exist before the sale even hit. <laughs> and they simultaneously delivered it to every being in the known and unknown universe and any multiverses that are, that are occurring. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, my God. Like instantaneous delivery everywhere, they, forever. They... And Earned. you got as much of it as you wanted. <laughs> it's not like there's a limit. It's like a fucking nothing buffet. So they they ended up making, I think it was what seventy one thousand dollars. Not not a small trifle of cash. Oh, it was a shitload of money, and it was straight profit. It was absolute pure, pure profit. Well, okay. So Cars Against Humanity is very well known for charitable contributions. Right. Usually when. When they do some stunt like this, they donate all the profits to a charity or a couple of charities. Uh, in fact, a lot of their expansion packs, all proceeds from those go to a particular charity. They, they pick a different one for each pack. Mm-hmm. And so th- they're, they're, very, they're very socially minded that way. And it's, it's very cool. Um, no, I believe, so not- I believe the, uh, the, the box of bullshit, like most of that, if not all of it, went to charity, right? Think so. I don't want to. Don't quote me on that because I. It's been like a year since. Yeah, I, I, I think I think a bunch of that went to charity, but either way, it, it probably okay. did. It, it most probably did. Well, the thing that's different about this, they're selling of nothing. They kept it all, so their their twelve employees or however many they have, they split their profit evenly amongst all of their employees, like well, all twelve of them. It wasn't exactly evenly, but it is appropriately. Well, right. It was, yeah. So, the, and each person was was able to spend the money however they wanted to spend it. And they posted it, and there's a link in the show notes. You can go there. <laughs> in fact, if you just go to cardsagainsthumanity.com, I think. Anyway, just go, fuck it. Google Cards Against Humanity and go to wherever, wherever it sends you. One of the, the link, the, one of the first things you see on their page is a link to their Black Friday sale. Anyway, they listed what every single employee spent their money on Mm -hmm. and something that i thought was really cool is well first of all these people spent their money on whatever the fuck they felt like spending their money on trip to vegas yeah it's shit uh pro one girl one girl bought a sex toy for like fifteen hundred dollars (laughs) yeah a lot of people brought uh like ps4s and wii u's and things like that But all One of guy, them, I paid his student loan, but every single fucking person put at least a few bucks, even as much as a couple thousand dollars toward a charity. Yep. And I, I think the minimum amount I saw to a charity was like 800 bucks. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Like six or 800 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So, the but, but most of them were, were right around a thousand dollars. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think one guy put like, I think he bought like two things for a few hundred bucks and then he put the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Toward charity. So cool, man. Th- these are like some of the coolest fucking people. Yeah. And we're not, like, we're not, we're not like trying to suck their dicks or anything else. We're just saying that, you know, you got some innovative ideas and you're doing good things with it and you're yeah. making us fucking laugh every year. So exactly. And exactly. every time we play the game. So, you know, R- ritual misery is a big fan of cards against humanity. Yeah. So just putting that out there. Um, yeah. Cards against humanity dot. Did we ever f- figure out what it was? No, no. You, you're the one with all the, like nothing else to do besides post shit in the show notes, man. You should, <laughs> and you haven't taken any notes this entire time. So it's, Oh, I have. Uh, no, I've like, I've got like, like, Whatever. Ten I don't see anyway, it. Anyway, anyway, carsagainsthumanity.com. Check it out. <laughs> great, great shit. Anyway. All right. All right. So, Batman versus Superman. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 God. Let's skip, let's skip this. Let's skip this for now. What? Let's skip no. this. No. Because I'm, I'm still thinking about Cars Against Humanity. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, like, you, you, need, you, need, you need some moose out real quick? I mean, uh, like, uh, I need to separate. How about I give you the nothing that I got from Cars Against Humanity? Here, there, there. I just delivered you the nothing. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Zen, Zen. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right, all right. See, see, that's all I'm it ready. took. Batman versus Superman, and I wore for for the occasion. I wore <laughs> a Batman and Superman T-shirt. Oh, jeez. <sighs> okay. Did you did you watch? I did not. This trailer, okay. I did not. I totally meant to, but that uh, comes with the yeah. not waking my ass up early enough to to prep. So, all right. So I linked it in the show notes. It's uh, it's, it's the first like full length trailer, I guess, because mm-hmm. all all of them have been teasers up to this point. Mm-hmm. And now, I've been... I, ha- I have heard that up until this point, people really didn't give too much of a shit because it just there wasn't so much there. But yeah. this this trailer is turning people's minds. From the two people that I talked about beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. Okay, so I saw an initial social media blast as soon as it came out, mm-hmm. but I haven't read or observed anything since then mm-hmm. other than the actual trailer. So this is, I'm just speaking solely from my own observations on this. So, all right, so a little history. I was skeptical about this movie when they fucking first announced it right like 400 years ago when they first conceived of the so, idea all right so first of all the superman movie the uh man of steel <sighs> Luke, lucas says nerd rage incoming <laughs> yes okay nerd rage is about that all right so so man of steel you can think what you want about that movie it's it was okay it was okay but they're trying to show a movie that's not Superman. They're trying to show a Batman movie with the Superman character. The the Dark Knight series of films, the 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 Nolan trilogy of Batman movies was incredibly successful. It was all dark and it was very brooding and very you know, uh, dark and uh. that's fantastic. It's a fucking Batman movie. It's supposed to be. But they're like, "Oh, Oh, oh, this is what people want. People want dark superhero movies. So we're making this Superman movie. So we're going to make it dark, just like the Batman movie. No. Fail, 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 fail. That was successful because Batman is a dark character. Yeah. Superman is a bright character. Superman is basically the comic book version of Jesus Christ. Essentially, yeah. Essentially, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's very bright. It's, he's all about hope. Oh, anyway, yeah, all right. So anyway, not to go, not not to go off on that. So anyway, so <laughs> so, Man of Steel is what it was. All right, fine. All right, okay. Whatever. For the record, I didn't watch that either. Uh, yeah. All right. So, or, I I heard it was a, a flying piece of garbage, and well, I'm not in the uh, business of wasting my time watching flying pieces of garbage. I'd say uh, I don't know if I'd call it garbage. The, it's worth it's worth watching, but it's ah, it's not what it's not what everyone wants Superman to be. All right, so fine. They're, they announced a sequel. Okay, it's like yeah, most of my course. high school girlfriends. <laughs> All right, so they announced a the sequel. I was like, okay, of course they did. Of course they did. They made some money on it. Of course they're gonna have a sequel. Mm-hmm. Fine, that's fine. Plus, DC is just grasping at straws, it, trying to grab anything that can fucking make any kind of money compared to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
Exactly. So after they decided that they're going to do a basically a Man of Steel 2, a couple of months later they announced the name of the movie. And it was called Batman v Superman. What? Okay, first of all, is it is it a court case? <laughs> It might as well be. Be super, like what? What? Because typically, when you have a fucking fight in the history of the fucking ever, if there's a fight, it's VS. So mm. versus, you mm. know. Okay, they're gonna fight in the main event: Batman versus Superman. That's what you want to think, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody that sees Batman v Superman, so okay, the <laughs> the plaintiff Batman comes forth. To sue the defendant, Superman. Like, what? Okay, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. Second. Wow. Batman doesn't exist in this Man of Steel universe yet. Okay. It's just Man of Steel. So, so as far as we know, in this world, this universe... Superman is the only superhero that that exists or has ever existed or whatever, right? Right. So the sequel, right out of the fucking gate, we're going to call it Batman versus Superman. Right. What? Like, what? Like you're, you're looking at order of operands right here. Like the, yeah. the, 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 it's a Superman sequel starting out with the word Batman. Right. All right. So, okay, whatever. I got over that shit. That was my initial... What the fuck are they doing? Okay. Okay. So I initially was skeptical and mm, all right, fine, whatever. I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. Okay. So they, they started releasing these teaser trailers Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that didn't do a whole lot to, uh, calm me down, I guess. (laughs) Cause it was was like, what? What, what what are they doing? Like, what? Why? Like, why is it just, you know, Batman comes out of nowhere and now wants to fight Superman. And, okay, all right. Then, then, they're like, okay, this movie is called Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay, so now they're leading uh, into something new. Oh, okay. They're leading. They're leading into the Justice League movie. Okay, I get it now. They're wanting to do what Marvel did, where they had an Iron Man movie and a Hulk movie and a Captain America movie and a Thor movie, et cetera, et cetera. And they built to the Avengers. Ah, that works so well. They made billions and billions and trillions and fucking whatever money, fucking dollars and shit, right? So let's do this. Cool. DC can do it too. Um. Okay. This new trailer for Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice showed me that they're not really building to anything. They're trying to throw every fucking thing at us all at fucking once. So this new trailer, all right. God damn it! I don't even know where to go. I don't even know where to fucking start my rage on this shit no we we, we know <sighs> <laughs> okay let, let me let me calm down for just a second and ask you this question okay did you watch terminator genesis i did the new terminator movie yeah. what did you think i enjoyed it me too um, i i enjoyed the uh i particularly enjoyed the flashbacks the callbacks from the original series and some of the scenes um, I wasn't overly impressed with the CGI for the young Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it wasn't, it didn't take me out of the story either. Like it, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was adequate. I mean, uh, I, I actually, I enjoyed the, the new incarnation with, uh, the, you know, the, the current, the current stream that they're going through. And I went in uh, with the understanding that they're changing timelines. So the whole river of time thing, there's going to be differences and it's, it could lead in a completely different direction. Yeah. No fate, but what we make, right? Right. I I understand that completely. So I didn't go into it with a big heartache or anything else, and I didn't come out of there with with a big heartache. I would I would watch it again. I think it's part of the normal universe. I think it actually flows with the other movies, because even in Agreed. the other movies, there's certain inconsistencies that are wrapped up in the river of time scenario. Right. 
So I have a, I have exactly one bitch about that movie. Okay. And it's not even it's not even with the movie itself. Fair enough. It's about it's about the goddamn trailer. The trailer gave away the entire plot of the movie to include the oh my god moment, the reveal, the holy shit reveal of the movie was in the fucking trailer. Yes. It's kind of a movie of okay. desperation. Yeah, well, I think I think fucking Batman v Superman trailer that was released just like two days ago, three days ago, thing. maybe. I think they did the same fucking thing. Mm. I watched the setup. It starts with Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent meeting each other at a charity ball that's put on by Lex Luthor. Okay. They meet each other, and they automatically fucking start talking shit about each other's alter egos. It's like, oh, hey, hey, Bruce Wayne, what do you think about Gotham City's Batman, that piece of shit? He's like, oh, well, fuck you, hypocrite, talking about your fucking alien fucking Metropolis fucking piece of shit Superman. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you, too. So that was the setup. Okay. All right. Along with the villain, the overarching villain, sitting there, literally standing there, Rubbing his hands together, like, oh, this is great. Literally, that happens in the trailer. Then, the middle segment, the main event, the court case, Batman v Superman. You get to see them fight a little bit in, in the trailer, and it's like, oh, I hate you. I'm, I, I got kryptonite. Oh, I got laser eyes. And okay, so. <laughs> So they actually fight for a little bit in the trailer. Like, like do, you, do you know how much I would love for you to be holding little, 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 uh, uh, oh, like you know four, how much four inch love? figures right now? I would love to have them right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not even <laughs> sure what that action is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's butt sex. Okay, so this is the pink one is Superman, <laughs> the dark one is Batman. Are you, are you holding a pen? And this is a it's a pink pen and some lipstick. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> no, it's, no, 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 no. This is a just a pink pen, and this is a bottle opener. Um, yeah, a little. You a have little, a bottle opener that looks like lipstick. Whenever I open a bottle of beer during the show, and this has been for the entire history of the Ritual Misery podcast, whenever I open a bottle of beer during the show, this is the bottle opener that I use. Why? Because it's here, <laughs> <laughs> and that's. Just the one that I've always used. <laughs> this one actually stays in here in the <laughs> library, office, studio, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So, so it's the offshoot that just didn't have a home otherwise. So it's just yeah. Bex stuff. is a piece of shit, fucking shitty beer. It is. It does not belong with my collection of of bottle openers. That gotcha. I've got a, a fairly sizable collection <clears> of bottle, <throat> and most of them advertise beers that I enjoy. The Ritual Misery Podcast, brought to you in part by Bex. brought to you by shitty beers. No, anyway, Bex, anyway, opening, that's not opening great beers. <laughs> I open great beers with a shitty beers bottle opener. Anyway, all right, so, all right, so, all right, here's the fight between Batman and Superman. And then, out of nowhere, comes the surprise villain that apparently, okay, all right, you know how superhero movies or sci-fi movies have the gray alien as being the you know the evil thing, whatever it is. You look at any of the Avengers movies, the, the, the alien that comes and tries to kill New York City and whatever. It's just just a, some random gray thing that I don't know. Look at almost any sci-fi movie or or superhero movie that doesn't have something iconic like you know the Predator or something like that. Just a, a a massive army of things. What do you get? You get the fucking standard gray alien. So, the reveal of this villain that comes, the, the, you know, the challenge to the title characters is your standard fucking gray alien. So Lucas and I were speculating on who this could be. Is this Dark Side? Is this just some fucking thing that they made? Is this a robot? Is it an alien? What what the fuck is this thing? We don't know. Well. I'm hearing through the rumor mill that this thing is doomsday. 
we established <laughs> we established last week that that you're not a comic book guy really you don't have a big history with comics but do you know who doomsday is i've heard the name sounds important it's got Remember a big name like doomsday like you can't you can't have Remember? an eight letter name and not have some kind of fucking power superman died hmm you ever in the 90s when superman died mm-hmm. and it was a huge deal it was fucking it, the news the mainstream news covered the shit out of this for right. weeks they covered it like mickey's birthday yeah like superman is dead mm-hmm. doomsday is who killed him cool okay so doomsday is this <laughs> very powerful very iconic character that requires a build-up to do properly smallville tried it and they fucking failed they fell on their fucking faces and i hated that whole fucking season it was garbage <sighs> There's a there's a lot wrong with Smallville, but anyway, I watched every <laughs> episode, and anyway, the the worst thing about Smallville was the Doomsday storyline. If this is in fact Doomsday in this fucking movie, then fuck you, fuck you, Zack Snyder, fuck you, like really, really fucking hard, fuck you. That this, fuck you, like your pen just fucked your lipstick. I can't even. I can't even exp- I, yeah, I, I I can't even I can't even justify raising my blood lo- my blood pressure level to the point that I can adequately describe my feelings about Doomsday being in this fucking movie. So, so this is what I'm getting from this. I have zero desire to watch this Batman versus Superman. Zero, none. Don't care. Don't give a shit. But I want you to go to the theater and watch this movie. <laughs> And you hope with the video God. camera sitting sitting in front of you, so <laughs> you that I can that. just sit there and watch your reaction to this movie while it's actually happening. Like that's what I want. That's and you I, know I'm gonna go see it too. I, 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 yeah, I, well, yeah, but I, I, I don't I don't care two shits about the movie. I just want to see your reaction during the movie. I don't want to see. I don't, don't want to hear like post movie analysis. I want to see the reaction of the movie while it's happening. So. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. So I'm not quite done with the trailer yet. I got uh, just one more, one more. Short oh my segment. god! Like, let's go. All right. So, 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 the gray bad guy shows up that may or may not be Doomsday. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And fucking, he's basically about to kill Batman, and there's this massive fucking explosion that was blocked by a shield held by Wonder Woman. <laughs> and there's a throwaway joke. Batman looks at Superman and says, "Is she with you?" And he looks at Batman and says, I thought she was with you. Waka waka. But then that's the you know, da, 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 dawn of justice. And like pretty much the entire Justice League is going to be in this movie. So okay. we're talking Aquaman. We're talking Flash. We're talking Cyborg. First of all, if, if, you, if there's ever a movie where a properly done Wonder Woman makes a fucking cameo, the movie is wrong. Completely wrong. You do not cameo Wonder Woman. Right. Right. It it should be That's that's a feature. That's not a cameo. Yeah. So now, anyway. now the only thing that I can see is if all of that happens in like the first thirty minutes of the movie and then it develops from there. It'd be inappropriately titled, but at least it would have some substance to it. But if that's the whole movie, I agree, it's gonna be shitty. Yeah, you Either know, I'm, way, I'm, I want to see your reaction. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be entertaining. It's, it's gonna be entertaining. I, I have faith that it's gonna be entertaining. But I, 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 I feel like, I feel like they're going to fail with this movie. And <sighs> okay, so sp- speaking of uh, of feelings, there was a brand new trailer for season six. Of Game of Thrones. You're goddamn right there was. Holy shit. <sighs> All right. So, to give fair warning, because to, for us to talk about this trailer, it is a spoiler for anyone who has not seen season five or has read every single book in The Song of Ice and Fire. To include myself. Right, but you have seen through season five. I have. So this talk from here on out will be a spoiler. So if you do not want to know about Game of Thrones season six, tune out. 
and that's enough time for people. <laughs> Pretty much the last fucking scene of season five is Jon Snow's death. Yes. Now, but, he does feature very, very prominently throughout this trailer for season six. Yes. They tease that he is, in fact, still alive. Because he's basically 75% of this trailer. But, okay, so there are certain things in this trailer. There is the chopping off of, um, uh, shit. Can't remember his fucking name. Ned. No. The, the, the chopping off of the hand. Oh, of, um, 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 um yes, 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 yes. The, uh, onion, the onion knight. No, wait, who, wait, who, <laughs> wait, who are we talking about? Hold on. <laughs> Cersei's brother. Oh yeah, 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 Jamie, Jamie Lannister. Yes, Jamie Lannister. There's the chopping off of Jamie's Lan- the Jamie Lannister's hand. There yes. is um, uh, Jon Snow lying in the snow with blood coming out from under him. Right. Which was um, like the f- right. There, but there are there. There's a flash. There's many scenes in here. It flashes through, and I watched this trailer like six times. So um, there are many scenes that flash through of all these things that are permanent, like the, 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 all the twisters that you couldn't believe happening. The Red Wedding, um, you know, all these little things like this. And, and the speaker, the speaker of the, of the, you know, the narrator says, the ink is dry. The story is told. Yes. The, yes. The past has been written, I think is what they said. So. <clears throat> all right. So, all right. There's nothing concrete. It's all ambiguous. It's just like a static I don't want to say static necessarily because there's it's full motion he's moving like a, in, in, in the sense that he's like swaying or whatever so he's not it's not like a still photo but it's basically a static Jon Snow standing there he's not doing anything it's not like he's fighting or saying lines or anything it's just it's basically just the actor standing there in costume so what the whatever that means we don't know but what's telling to me is the very last line of the trailer where they say they have no idea what is going to happen. I'm sure right. that's a line in season six, but okay, so what I think they are saying we're, we're, in this trailer the, We're is cutting that, into the trailer. You ready? We're cutting to the trailer. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and play. 41 seconds long. Okay. We watch. We listen. And we remember. The past is already written. The ink is dry. All right. So, we're, we're going to break this down just a little bit here. The first... 20 seconds first first 19 seconds of this of this trailer are Jon Snow standing in a field with the wind slowly blowing through his hair all the shit the women want to see okay <laughs> okay yeah and then it goes to Ned Stark being beheaded it goes to the uh the skeletons popping up out of the ice I can't even tell what this scene is. Is um, uh, the 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 fucking Ice King, or whoever he is. Yeah, the 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 White Walker guy. Like the yeah. the the lead the the seemingly lead dude though. Yeah, which <laughs> doesn't really exist in the. Yes, but. Yeah, well, and this then is kind of what I'm leading to. It gets to the point of Jon Snow lying in the snow with blood. The, the last scene of season five. Yes. Okay. We're going to yeah. continue from that. Okay. So, but the last line in the trailer is they have no idea what is going to happen. I think what they're saying is the audience has no idea what is going to happen because up to this point, the first five seasons of the show, there's been some variances. Sure. But for anyone that's read all the way through the books, you know what's going to happen, basically. You know all this shit. However, 
season five has either caught up to or surpasses the events in George R. R. Martin's books. Yes. So you think this is a fourth wall thing where the narrator is actually speaking about the audience to the audience? Well, not exactly. I think I think that is a I don't think it's a narrator. I think it's a line from season six that they are using in the trailer to spoken by whom? I don't know. I don't know. Because I recognize the voice. I swear I recognize the voice. I just don't I know would have to, right, I here. would have to listen to it a couple more times. Uh, uh, right, here we go. They have no idea what's going to happen. That's Brand. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think that, that last line is spoken by Brand. The rest of it is spoken by a different narrator. And the last yeah. line, the last thing you see, the last video that you see is Brand doing his little transmog or whatever, where his eyes roll up in the back of his head and he starts, you know, going through, you know, other yeah. animals or people or whatever. Right. So. But yeah, no, but it's it's no shit. We have no idea what's going to happen because there there is no precedent anymore. There, we are now past what Martin has written. Right. So who the fuck knows? And it's going to be interesting to see, is the show going to go in a completely different direction than what Martin is planning for the books? Or did Martin tell the writers, this is where I'm going with the books, and they're going to try to basically... See, him and I I genuinely think we covered this. Um, yeah, I think we did pretty like, thoroughly like, last year, like 20, and like twenty episodes ago. <laughs> I, I still think that uh, I still think it comes down to it's the same story told either from different points of view, or the television folks are just making the modifications necessary to to trim up the books in order to make it more ingestible on the screen. I still think that, you know, I, I don't think it's like uh, different stories at all. I think it's the same story. No, that, that's that's what I thought until season five. See, anyway, uh, go back and listen to <laughs> our previous episodes. <clears throat> we'll get so stuff. and go watch the go watch the damn trailer. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, Twitch. Yeah, man. Okay, so last week we talked about Twitch mm-hmm. and uh, RMP um, doing. Uh, a Twitch stream. So uh, kind of as, as uh, an augment or a, um, a supplemental uh, broadcast to our actual podcast. Right. Right. But we hadn't, we hadn't really tested it out <laughs> last week. I talked about how my PS4 networking issues have prevented me from streaming anything. Well, did you earlier out? today? Early, yeah. <laughs> earlier today, I successfully streamed on Twitch. However, I'm still trying to figure out how to <coughs> save save the videos, uh, you know, archive them or, or what have you, so people can look at them later. Uh, it it worked as a live medium, um, but as a you know, hey, look look what we did last week kind of thing. Um, yeah, still trying to figure that out. I got I got to run a couple more tests. <laughs> um, but but no, it was, it was really cool. I did a. Uh, a game of um did game, game, a game of snaps yep a game of snaps the 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 one that has race cars with um with soccer the rocket league style snapping <clears throat> no so i streamed a game of of rocket league holy shit dude <laughs> yeah man I, it, like you, you need about three I'm, more beers yeah i need more beer i need to be about 15 years younger and I need to have just woke up like an hour and a half ago. Hmm. I know somebody that did that. So, um, <laughs> anyway, lies. No, but so anyway, I, I I streamed as a test run. I I streamed a Rocket League match, and it was a successful test. Other than the saving slash archiving of the video. So as soon as we figure that out, we're gonna be rocking and rolling with the RMP Twitch stream. Nice. So something something to look forward to for the the five or six people that enjoy watching us. Uh, for now, you can add Del Noche seventy seven to your Twitch subscriptions, and you may or may not see something from me in the near future. Nice, very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, speaking of uh, 
scooting around. <laughs> so we've had some snow here lately. And this would be, oh, yeah, be a real quick, real quick thing. December in Korea. I remember that well. So I'm riding my scooter. Now, uh, let, 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 me, let me show you something. Let's break the wall here. <laughs> okay. Now, by scooter, just so you know, we're, we're talking like a, a, a Vespa type. Uh, uh, not, e- not, even a, not even a Vespa type. It's um, but it's a powered. It's a powered scooter, is what I mean. It, it, it is. Not, it is. It is. It's not uh, like it's, a. Um, it's not like a, a razor or anything else. It's thing you can throw in your. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. This is my helmet. Pretty simple mm-hmm. helmet. Mm-hmm. There's my GoPro mount. Yes, I have a GoPro mount on my 49 cc scooter helmet because I think it's fucking funny. <laughs> I think it's. It's just one of those things that people see and they just they're like, "What the fuck? Are you serious?" No, I'm not. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. So I'm riding my scooter back at about twelve fifteen the other night, back from karaoke, and I'm doing it very carefully. First of all, the front wheel froze, so I had to like knock the ice off it and shit like that. So I'm going down the road, and you know the spots where they paint the road to for the crosswalks? Those are very yeah. very slick, especially when the roads are already <laughs> slick. So I'm going along, do, 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 and I hit that, and my back tire slides out from underneath me. Now I'm only going like 15 miles an hour, literally. Back tire slips out from underneath me, comes around. I do, I spin twice in the middle of the fucking road. 12, 15 at night, nobody's there to see. Right? Wrong. There's a six pack truck right behind me, full of people laughing their ass off. Oh okay, my god. Fine. Of course there is. I end up facing them. Ain't going backwards from where I was, facing them. They're coming in. I can see that the kid driving the truck is a young kid. He sees me spin out in front of him, slams on his brakes. This is a government vehicle. It's not the best equipped vehicle. Certainly does not have a snow mode for the analog brakes. <laughs> so I'm looking at him. He hits the brakes. The truck starts sliding towards me. Oh, God. So I'm in the middle of the road, have a truck coming straight towards me. I can't get out from under my bike because the ice is so slick that I can't grip, like put, get footing on the ground to get the hell out of the way to let the, the truck run over the bike. Like that, that, was, that was my first thought was like, fuck it. You know, the scooter's gone. A, a couple hundred bucks, whatever. Um, I couldn't get out from underneath it. So my only option was essentially to try to drag the scooter with me because I couldn't get away from it, right? Well, I ended up oh. getting it lifted up. Now, I had to reach down, re, you know, re-grab the handles and reach down and grab it. Now, the scooter's still running at this time. Mm. So I reached down and grabbed the handles, and I'm pulling it up with the one foot of, of leverage that I have, pulling it up. And, of course, when you pull it up and it's, it's coming up and, like, the wheels are sliding up underneath it and it stands up, your hand ends up lower than where it was. Well, the throttle on the fucking scooter is like a motorcycle. So when the hand goes down, the throttle goes up, and the back tire spins me around two more times right there in the middle of the fucking road. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. So really? I- <laughs> Wait, was you, was, were you filming with your GoPro? No. God that's damn the it. problem. Like, I never. God damn it. <laughs> This would have been this whole story would have been worth it if we had GoPro. That would have footage. that would have been the one thing that I could ever have recorded on my scooter GoPro uh, that would have made it worthwhile, and I oh, fucking missed it. Damn it, dude! <laughs> so, so after I spin two more times in the middle of the road, the truck is still sliding towards me, but after after the slide, I end up facing the other direction. So I said, "Fuck it!" I hit the gas. I pushed the tire into the curb where the where the rough ice was and it <laughs> caught and I just took off like a fucking rocket. Right <laughs> after that is a stop sign. So of course, being the law abiding person that I typically am, oh, shit. I go and I have to hit the brakes. Now I've already oh. got a fucked up right hand. My good brake is on the front, which is operated by the right hand. So I can't use my front front brake. I don't know okay. how well that would have worked out for me because I used the back brake and the back brake is very soft. Like you can squeeze the back brake completely and it won't stop the scooter. Just slow it down. I hit the back brake. The back tire slides out from underneath me again. 
and I spin another full turn and come to a stop at the stop sign, facing the right direction, my feet out like fucking like uh like outriggers, holding the scooter up, freezing my ass off. I've got snow and ice and shit just covering me. The inside of my face shield, the 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 the, the moisture from my breath is frozen to the inside of the face shield, so I can barely see as it is. Oh my God, man. The truck comes to a stop, a sliding stop about five feet behind me at the stop sign. Dude, I I think I saw this once on an episode of Mr. Bean. (laughs) It was so ridiculous, man. And finally, okay, so after the stop sign, I I got into the gas just a little bit and kind of just scooted forward. I kept my fucking feet out like outriggers, um, (laughs) just sliding on the fucking ice. Uh, Made it up the hill to the dorm. Uh, but yes, the the one opportunity where wearing the GoPro would have been humorous and fun and worth it, and I didn't have the fucking thing on. I was so upset. God. Oh my gosh, man. So now I'm going to start wearing my GoPro anywhere I go. <laughs> yeah, the rest I knew that was going to happen. That was my oh own my version God. of Rocket League, just sliding around, bumping into shit. <laughs> <laughs> so... So there you go. There, there was the culmination of my week after, you know, after getting, getting fired from my position after, you know, uh, uh, not getting anything done for the next two days. Cause I didn't have like a computer to do shit on because everybody's fucking already on them and stuff. And yeah, there you go. Sliding around, um, almost getting run over by fucking six pack boards. That's amazing. That was fun. That's fucking amazing. So you you remember you remember in Star Wars when R two D two projected the image of Princess Leia to Luke Skywalker? Mm-hmm. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Right, which I actually think was part of a larger story that R two uh, cynically cut down into just that little piece right there because he just wanted that to play over and over again. I don't think it was broken or damaged. I think R two actually manipulated that scene, but that's just my own uh, sarcastic view of the thing. So. No, I, I I agree with you on that. Uh, but anyway, the technology doesn't really exist, right? To to project a three D hologram that exists in space, right? Well, um, well, well, actually, it does, and it's called volumetric display. There is a kick. There is an active Kickstarter right now for. It's called Holovect. Holovect volumetric display. This guy figured out a way to make holograms that exist in a three-dimensional way that you can you can see from any angle from the you know the proper whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the link is going to be in the show notes, and I encourage everyone. To go to this Kickstarter, or you, if for the audio listeners, you can you can just you can search Holovect, which is H O L O V E C T, or you can search volumetric display. You can probably even search R two D two for that matter, because I think they I think they mentioned R two D two in the uh, in the in the uh, in the video. notes in the video for the for the yeah, Kickstarter. It, it, it's they're going for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes, thirty four days to go. And they're sitting at $3,300 with 18 backers. So that tells right. me that the people that are backing this are actually putting a good chunk of money into it, but yes, they need more publicity. Yeah, they don't have the publicity, but the people that do see it fucking recognize it for being a technological advance that needs yeah. to happen. This guy just needs more. He needs more money to to yeah. just to throw at this project because he's ba- he's using his own money to put together this amazing, amazing technology is basically it's it's one of those things that is the future is now. This mm-hmm. is one of those techs, and this guy is doing it. I, I think but he I think he should have uh, he should have watched the contender videos on how they made one hundred and forty two thousand dollars in thirty days because um, it was that all was, about publicity okay. and all about being you know getting it out there beforehand and making right. it known because only having eighteen backers is a sign of not having. Well, this is a brand new this is a brand new Kickstarter. Right. So it's very early in the campaign. So if Diamond Club Diamond Club 
do your fucking magic. And he's do in Austin, actually. Magic. Yes. So maybe we'll be able to see something like this at South by Southwest next year. Pro- I hope so. Oh, my God. I hope so. Because that, that is such a cool tech. So Diamond Club, I know some of you are watching. Do your fucking thing. Do what Diamond Club does. Fucking make this make this big. Blow it up. Blow yep. it up. This guy, this guy needs the money, and he this is a tech we need. Was, if you want to live was this on the current future, geek this week? Um, I did I didn't listen to current geek yet. It, it certainly should have been if it wasn't already. That's, uh that's, yeah, that's it might be shit. it might be too early. If it's not if it's not there this week, it will be next week. I almost yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, well, we'll I, I'm we'll gonna submit it. If yeah, it's we'll, not. We'll, we'll get that put in the subreddit. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely very cool, very very cool looking. We'll get that that uh, that in the show notes. Um, go check it out, and if uh, if you've got the money and you've got the time, go ahead and throw it in there. Yep, absolutely. So um, so speaking of money and time, uh, we we have an issue. Mm. We have an issue. Yes. We have people that watch our show, that enjoy our show, that enjoy sitting down and having a conversation with us, even if they're not talking to us in a way we can hear it because i'm sure they're they're talking <laughs> probably just yelling at us profanities and such at the monitor um, <laughs> how can people like that support a show like ours if they don't have any time or money if they don't have any time or money mm-hmm. well you know what the you know what the the biggest thing they could do to support our show they could go over to itunes or even stitcher and rate the show hmm. that didn't take very much time it- at all yeah, it'd be cool if they wrote a review, but they don't have to. Yeah. All they got to do is throw some stars up there. Okay, Five so stars. so the, the bare minimum, throw log into iTunes or Stitcher and and throw a review out there, uh, just the stars, just clicky clicky on the stars and and yeah, you know, call, that would help okay. us a lot. Now, if you have a few more minutes than that, you could you could write a little review in there. Yeah, you, absolutely. Clicky clicky the stars, write a little review. Okay, so so mm-hmm. we're building up here now. We're we're going from from next to nothing, next to zero commitment at all. Almost hmm. no fucking commitment, right? Like you yeah, only have to watch the show to effort. do that. You know what I mean? Like it's like you, you don't need to know shit. Just t- type. You, just, you can tell your grandma to go to our iTunes page, I guess, yeah. and, and click five stars, and that's okay. So, deal. so that would be that would well, that might actually take a little bit longer. But if you had some tech savvy friends, some iTunes savvy friends, that would actually take less time to tell them to go review the show than to actually Absolutely. review it yourself. Absolutely, but just don't Absolutely. tell the douchey ones that are going to give us one star. Because seriously, like that's fucked up. You know, that's that's not yeah, right. Fuck the, that's kind of troll behavior. Yeah. Man. So um, okay. So so you go from telling a friend, just telling a friend about the podcast. Hey, a couple of fucking dick bags like to talk about random shit, and it's kind of funny. Sometimes it's serious, but either way, I enjoy it. Bare right. minimum, like that, that. That took me like fucking five seconds. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. so then you you scale tell, that tell up. People, tell them people in the wild, or you can get on social media. You can link our. See there show. you go, that, and that's just a repost, just a fucking reclicky. Just clicky. a re- yeah, just retweet it or yeah. share. Yeah, our on the on the on the old space books. So space, uh, yeah, the 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 space the space twits or what space booker twit. Uh, we'll figure something out for next time. All the things, yes, the yeah, social all the things. The social, yeah. Um. So uh, click, the click the things and like them and share them and. So there we go. So so there's that, and then uh, you you go from there. Okay, we're scaling it up here. We're we're gonna go ahead and scale it up. A little bit more time doing your own review, your own actual review in iTunes. Now we're talking a couple minutes. Okay, all right, all right. So if you want to take it a step further, yeah, yeah. What's, what's could, the next step? What's the next level you, of commitment from there? You can email us. Email, at okay. Podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Okay. Um, you can go to our Facebook. To, yeah, you could absolutely go to our Facebook. Uh, ritual, just search ritual misery. You'll find us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can call us. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could definitely call you us. You can leave us voice money. Now that wouldn't take very much time five, at all. That that could actually even take less time than the fucking email. So you know, absolutely. It's it's five six seven six nine T R M P C five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Yep. Leave us a voicemail. We're gonna we're gonna not only we're going to get your feedback, right? Which you know, hey, thanks for the praise. Oh, oh! Thanks for the feedback. I didn't realize that we sucked in that right, area. Right, We're right. gonna fix that. No, we realize it... we suck in it. We suck in all areas, but it, it's well, matter right. of, it's a matter of degree of suckage at this point. Right, exactly. We're trying to move out of beta, which might happen in the next I don't know eighty or ninety years. I'm yeah, hoping. Yeah, could I'm be, hope could be. That. So help us move out of beta. Yep. Um, you can do all of these things, and we and we will share your now, feedback. These, these are all minimalist. I mean, this is only. 
literally a couple minutes of your time at the most. Just a right. couple minutes. Another no. thing you could do mm-hmm. that you're going to do anyway, you're going to go to Amazon and, and spend a, you know half your fucking paycheck. On, there on there we go. There, so so RitualMisery.com, click on the Amazon banner, yeah, and just do just, the normal Amazon shit you would do anyway. Yeah, exactly. Instead, it's one more click. Instead of yeah. just going to Amazon.com, go to RitualMisery.com and then click the Amazon link, and then you just shop as you normally fucking. Yeah, order. yeah, it's fine. It doesn't charge you anything else, but we but again, get a couple bucks for every like. Couple again, hundred. we are talking minimalist effort here. Like, like if, you know, that's that's the fucking simple Minimal. shit. That's oh yeah. my god, that is so minor, but that is actually it's easy. That's more tangible. So you, you that's 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 more uh, tangible on the show itself because now you're actually helping fund us. You're actually keep, keeping the Skype going. You're you're keeping uh, the website up. You're keeping the pod feed going. So you're doing all that with that. That's yeah. that's actual that's money. So that's that's money, not just time, but minimal time, and no money out of your pocket, but a little bit of a money coming back to us. Okay, sure, sure. All right. Um, also, if you're a fan of the App Store on Apple, you can do the same thing there. Ritualmisery.com. Sure. Click on the App Store link. Just buy whatever app or or movie music whatever, whatever you, else you would what, normally yeah, do. Whatever you were gonna buy anyway. Yeah. Whatever you were gonna. Yeah, and then you know that 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 helps us out too. You know, that's just minor stuff, and we're only adding a couple clicks to your day, and no actual financial commitment. Right so, now, if you're if you're an actual fan, you can go to patreoncom slash ritual misery. Yeah, yeah, that'll really help us out. Now, now even, okay. even even on Patreon, there's levels of commitment. Now, get this: Are you ready for this? You can go yeah, to patreoncom donate a penny per show, just one penny. A fucking penny, a cent, a little cent per mm. show, and you will end up getting all access to everything we put out there. Oh yeah, the yeah. extended all shows, our, our the after patron- shows, the before shows, anything yeah. that we put online will be on there, whether or not it's in the stream and whether or not it's available anywhere else. Right, lots of exclusive Absolutely. content on there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and growing, by the way. And growing. Okay, so that's, that's just a penny a show. Now, that does take a little bit of time. You have to actually log in and create an account with Patreon, throw a credit card number in there. I know some people are itchy about that, but, I mean, Amazon's got it. Patreon might as well have it, too. So, yeah. So you're going to do that. Um, and that's just, you know, at the very top of the page, it says give a dollar podcast. That's kind of just a baseline. You can put .01 in there, and it still works. It still Absolutely. works. But Absolutely. The, but the penny a month will actually get you to – the ability to watch all the extra stuff. Right. And you don't get charged until you reach a dollar mm-hmm. of commitment. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you have to reach the pledge of $1 before you get charged. So if you, if you pledge a penny per episode, dude, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a couple of years before yep. you even get charged. One whole dollar. Ooh, calm down. Okay. So, now, what if they wanted to up that just a little bit? I mean, they've already put the time commitment in. They've, they've decided on a, a penny's worth it. it. We're worth a penny of your fucking money, right? Just a penny. So I hope so. What if they wanted to go, well, how about not just a dollar where it's actually tangible every week we're getting a dollar? Okay, because that, that's, 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 a, that's a satisfaction thing itself. If you're actually committing a dollar sure. to, our, to our show each week, that's just fucking amazing. We get a couple people doing that. And most of the small stuff that we have is paid for, and it becomes free out of our pocket. That'd be amazing. Absolutely. That'd be great. Absolutely. But what if they? What if they're actual like like big time fans, like five dollars, like, like super fans? Five dollars. You know what five dollars would get them? What What does five dollars get a super fan? Five dollars an episode, twenty bucks a month. I know that's that's like fucking three lattes or some shit, right? Yeah, something like that. Five shit. bucks an episode will actually get you invited to a, a hangout. Featuring me and you, ooh, that we'll actually put in the stream. Ooh, we will personally fun. thank you on the show, and we'll pimp some shit out if you have have a project you need pimped out. Oh, so it's like yeah. five dollar advertisement to all of our fans. That would be fantastic. I mean, man. that's that. Hey, how can I can I get in on that too? Can you, I? Well, can you, I, you can could. I come on this show? You could. That'd be great if I could come on the show and yeah. say whatever. Well, it'd be great if you ever showed up for the show with actual shit. So, um. Now, if you want to become a little bit better the than that. showed up on time for the show. It, oh, well, well, you want to talk about that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you want to yeah, talk about that. Yeah, you're right. Let's not go there. <laughs> um, now, if you wanted to go as high as $10 a podcast. Oh, 
Ten bucks. Shit. Ten now bucks we're talking a week. real money. We're that's that's like a that's like a, that's like a ten dollar bill. That's like that's that, that's wow. shit that matters. That's, I mean, that's that's yeah, actually we're really talking about fans. We're yeah, talking about real yeah, fans. yeah. So if you if you're willing to do that, you can come on the show. You have an open invite to come on the show. Yeah, whenever you want. Open invite anytime you want. Talk about whatever the fuck you want. We'll make fun of you. That's because that's what we do. Well, yeah, but they're going to make fun of us too. Right. Sure. I mean, that that just makes the whole thing better, right? Yeah, that's that's how I see it. <laughs> so, but that that that's an open invite right there. That's just whenever you want to come in. Now, if you got if you got some actual money, uh, there's some other things that we can do. Fifty bucks or more per podcast will actually invite you into our Slack, into our inner circle, um, so I can do social experiments on you when you don't know about it. Um, all you gotta do is go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and you can see all the all of the rewards. All of this, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Go check we it even, out. Man. We even have for the super mega holy shit ultra fan a thousand dollars per podcast. A thousand dollars per podcast, we will actually come to your house and do the podcast from your house. So all right, so so there's one thing that I'm actually curious about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's all these things that are available through the Patreon mm-hmm. the, for, for the, the mega fans. All right, so the mega fans that are going to contribute these sums of money they want something in return they want they want t-shirts man they want hats they want coffee cups mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is there is there a way is there a way to get some ritual misery swag swag there yeah. is there is and that link is coming this week we will have links to t-shirts sweaters swag uh, uh steins and coffee cups umbrellas whatever the fuck you want to do but in the meantime, in the meantime, you can go to diamondclub.tv forward slash, is it shop or store? Um, yeah, it's one of those. I don't have that link up. Why not? I don't know, because you're bringing it up right now, and you're about to tell us what that link well, is. Yeah, but it'd be helpful if you had it when you fucking started the thing. Well, <laughs> well you brought it up. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. Well, so well start, fuck off. So start Diamond Club, Diamond Club TV forward slash shop. There you go. Shop. shop. S H O P. Yeah. So Sergeant Sar- Muffin, the wonderful, wonderful dude that he is. Uh, he he's basically the the guy that made Diamond Club TV. He put up this store, Diamond Club TV slash shop. And there's some really cool stuff in there. <laughs> Most of our listeners are are diamond clubbers. If if you don't already know about this shop, <laughs> dude, what yeah. the hell? Get in there and buy some shit. Santa beard, some ghetto swag, some diamond club swag. Get a fucking dog scarf. Everybody wants a diamond club dog scarf. That yep. shit's so, real right there. So anyway, all right. So we've been we've been pimping some shit uh, for like the last five or ten minutes. Uh, let's let's pimp somebody out. Let let's let's pick one person that um they kind of pimped us in social media this week let's let's call you've got to be talking about cabo wabo yeah that guy cabo wabo this dude first of all he's one of the funniest fuckers i've ever met in my life like <laughs> genuinely funny like he he doesn't try to make people laugh he's just that guy that you laugh when you're around him anyway yeah, um, he's got some funny shit on the old on a uh, on a uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, got one particular video where he has a, a buddy of his getting a lung reinflated after it collapsed, Ooh, and he's just yeah. standing there recording it, which I thought was funny as fuck to begin with. But then, <laughs> yeah, did, did he? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah, funny dude uh, at Cabo Wabo seventy nine on Twitter. Go ahead and follow him. He's got some funny shit he puts out there. He's another Diamond Club fan. And, uh, yeah, great dude. Really great dude. And gave us uh, some reviews and shit, and we really appreciate that. So, uh, hey, Cabo, fuck you. Um, yeah, it's Cabo. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> um, okay, man. I think that's about it for our show. In yeah. The last last half hour, which has been a commercial for Random Products. So, um, yeah. yeah. We've been talking for, like, the last three and a half hours about – supporting us and and, and right it's basically commercial well basically, I, figure, I figure 12 hours per podcast is appropriate to to get our <laughs> shit out there and you know just to make things happen for us so yeah man all right so if, if you're tired of listening to the show and you just want to you know find out a little bit more about me you can go to twitter 
and look up at rm underscore del noche or if you are a beer guy like me go to ratebeer.com look up username del noche now if you're a gamer guy are you like watching people play games you can add me del noche 77 on twitch there's not a whole lot of content there yet but hopefully that's <laughs> going to change in the near future what about you amos where are you at um okay so first of all you can find me on twitter at ethan kane uh, you can also find me on the PS Network, PlayStation Network, Ethan Kane on there. It's pretty simple. It's got a big fucking goofy look and grin face of myself, so it's not hard to find. Um, now, for the show itself, you can follow it at Ritual Misery. It basically just uh, tells you when the shows go live, so you can go re- watch it on your own time. Uh, you can submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Um... Call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Yeah, like seriously, call that number and leave a message. (laughs) We will probably play it. Like there is a 99.9% chance that we will play your message live on the show. There you go. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and uh, give feedback at richwizardy.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for letting us listen to this music or play this music that uh, just cut in and all super loud. And uh, for me, for you, and for Kent, this has been your Rich Wizardry Podcast. Yep. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>